Hello everybody. It's 8 o'clock, it's Wednesday night, that means it's time for our midweek Wednesday worship and I'm here and you're there and we're ready to start. Wonderful to have you with us and a very, very warm welcome to each, every single one of you. Excuse the technical hitch there with the slight echo. We have with us uh, tonight, Ron is here and Isabel. Hello to you, Kathleen as well in Tewkesbury. Joan is with us. Uh, Brian and Barbara Huss are with us. Jane and Bob are with us. Rolly and Helen. Olive and Nigel. Mary. And Thomas Lynham in Dublin. Wonderful to have you with us, Thomas. Joining us from uh, lovely Dublin and from Crumlin, St Mary's Church. We have uh, Linda's with us, Jean is here, Dorothy's here, Vivian is here. Terrific, we've got about 20 people. That's a great way to start. And let's get going. Um, announcements, what have we got? So um, Wednesdays are back up. This is our second one of the year, 2022. So that's wonderful to be back. Um, God willing, we'll carry on each Wednesday at 8 p.m. And Fridays at 1 p.m. we have our um, brief time of prayer for the sort of middle of the day on a Friday. So you'd be most welcome to join us then. Sundays, God willing, we continue with um, in-person church on Sundays. This coming Sunday, the uh, the, um, 16th, yeah, the 16th, we should be in Kelly-Mard in Lahai and in Donegal Town and the 12 o'clock Donegal one will be live streamed. We're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and I think it promises to be quite interesting. Tonight of course we're looking at the book of Revelation. We're making slow uh, headway through it but in a good way I hope and we'll be taking some time on that tonight. Um, that's the main things I think that I want to say to you by way of announcements, just to remind you, of course, of the, the Friday prayer, as is, as is mentioned there, one o'clock. And also to remind you, I haven't mentioned this for a while, but we do have our phone service also. And maybe there's somebody that you know who is just not able to get online at all, but they might enjoy to ring a simple phone number and to listen to a short uh, recorded service. It's about approximately a 20 minute uh, recorded service. It's done specially for that phone line and uh, that is available. Right, we're gonna have hopefully a good bit of time to worship God tonight and we're going to go for first of all um, one that is based of course on the worship of heaven holy 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 now it does say in the second line of this song early in the morning our song shall rise to thee and it's not early in the morning but sure isn't it also true that late at night holy 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 Full and mighty God. 
work shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Oh, we thank and we praise you, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We come before you in worship and praise tonight. You are holy, holy, holy. You are far beyond us, O oh Lord. You are separated from us by the depth of our sin and the height of your holiness. The sinful human eye may not even see your glory. And also your eye is too pure to look upon evil. And yet we thank you that through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, you have opened to us a new and living way into your presence. We thank you that through the cross and resurrection of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we may enter into your presence with joy and with confidence and knowing your fatherly care. We thank you that you welcome us to come and lay our praise before you. Thank you, Lord, through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. A very warm welcome to you as you join us. Since we were chatting earlier, we've got some other people that have joined us in here, like uh, Kathleen, and uh, Dorothy and Vera and Kathleen and some others who are watching us as well. Great, wonderful that you're here. Let's continue to praise God. Just one more brief song. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord and most worthy city of our God, the holy place, the joy of the whole earth. Great is the Lord in whom we have the victory. He aids us against the enemy. We bow down on our knees. And Lord, we want to lift your name on high. And Lord, we want to thank you for the works you've done in our lives. And Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. For you God eternal throughout earth and heaven above. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise, the city of our God, the holy place, the joy of the Lift your name on high, and Lord, we 
want to thank you for the works you've done in our lives. And Lord, we trust in your unfailing love. For you alone are God eternal throughout earth and heaven above. take a moment or two in the prayer of confession. It's good at all times that we acknowledge our sin and our weakness, but as the old prayer book uh, service said, most chiefly ought we so to do at the times when we gather together to hear God's word and to bring him praise. So let us confess. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well... We'll do some more praise in a few moments. We're going to turn to the Word of God. We're going to turn to the Scriptures, to the book of Revelation that we have been uh, examining together these evenings. And chapter 5, and I'm going to again read the whole of Revelation chapter 5, although we looked at the first half of it last uh, Wednesday. Revelation chapter 5. Here is what the Word of God says. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing at the centre of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp. And they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise. 
Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and on the sea and all that is in them, saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honour and glory and power for ever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Open our eyes, O Lord, in the mighty power of your Holy Spirit. Come with illumination. Come with the wind of the Spirit to drive home the points that you want to make. Come, breath of God, to set our tongues loose to praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, in one sense, there's very little explanation that I really need to give or can give about this passage. We saw last week how this uh, amazing vision that John sees, which is uh, related to us in words, and it's hard to picture it altogether. Things like a, a lion who's like a lamb and has seven horns and all these kind of things. But the central idea that here is this dramatic scene. There's a dilemma, there's a problem, there is this scroll which represents all of God's plans and purposes for judgment and salvation and it cannot be opened, these things cannot be brought to pass because no one's worthy to open the scroll, no one is able to, uh, no one has the code if you like to release those blessings and then along comes the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David, the lamb who was slain. And of course, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is worthy to open the scrolls, uh, to break the seals and to open the scroll. And we took it from that, that central to the whole of history past and central to the whole of God's plans for the present and the future is the Lord Jesus Christ and specifically the cross of Christ, the shed blood of Christ, the slaying of Christ as a sacrificial lamb is the central point of history and everything that comes before that funnels down into that point of the cross and everything that happens afterwards explodes outwards from the cross of Christ. So this event that could be written off as the insignificant execution of a minor criminal in a small Roman province 2,000 years ago, 2,000 miles away, who cares, what does it matter? Actually, it's the centre of the universe. And of history. So all of that was kind of uh, revealed in Revelation chapter 5. And what does it result in? Well, in a sense, we're going to see that over the following weeks because we're going to see these scrolls open. And if you thought things were getting exciting and psychedelic already in the book of Revelation, it's going to get much, much more. And the visions are going to get very dramatic and powerful and sometimes um, disturbing and often comforting. And before all of that, in the second half of Revelation chapter 5, the sacrifice of Christ and his triumph over death result in praise. That's the first response to what God has done. I think that's so, so important for us to realize and to remember that before we go and, you know, fight the good fight and even before we go and share the gospel and before we head out there to change the world through our actions and before we go out to love our neighbor with good deeds, the very first response to God and to what he's done is to fall down in worship before him. To give him praise. That's so, so central. It's a central task for us as individual Christians is to praise and worship God. Something we want to be doing every day. 
is is worshipping him in our prayers. Why does the Lord's Prayer start, hallowed be thy name? Hallowed means honoured. So Jesus was teaching us that at the outset of our prayers, we should be falling down in worship before Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. Why do church services include praise, even if We may be sadly curtailed at the minute from belting out uh, sung worship in some churches. That is the case, sadly, but not for long. But we can speak out psalms. We can praise in the inward worship of our hearts. Why? Because uh, he is worthy. And because praise is absolutely central to our existence as Christians. And what are we going to be doing in heaven? Praising. Does that mean it's going to be just like a, a one of those hymns that has endless numbers of verses? No, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be enjoyable. It's going to be liberating. We will have perfect bodies, so we'll all be able to sing beautifully in tune uh, and not get tired. Our minds will be fixated on Christ and on the Father and the Holy Spirit and will be adorning their beauty and there'll be endless riches to discover in Christ. So we can get ready for that by praising him now. Who do, who does the praising? Well, you remember these, these 24 elders, which we weren't entirely sure, but some people think they may be angelic figures. Um, it seems perhaps slightly more likely that they're human figures, representing uh, leadership, apostles, um, kind of uh, almost priestly kind of figures, um, uh, but called elders, uh, presbyters uh, in the Greek, presbyteroi, the the elders from which we get the term Presbyterian, uh, from which um, ordained Anglican ministers are sometimes referred to as presbyters. Um, I'm not suggesting that the uh, 24 elders in heaven are Church of Ireland ministers. Okay, not saying that, but they, they represent the apostles. They represent the people of God. They sing. They sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God peoples from every tribe and language and people and nation. You've made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God. They will reign on the earth. That is amazing, isn't it? You are worthy because you were slain. Now, in in everyday life, you don't praise someone for losing. In sport, the winning team gets the trophy. They get the glory. They get the praise. Yes, you might commend the loser. You might say, well, they fought very hard and they, you know, they did their best. And, you know, the winning captain might be interviewed and say, well, you know, they well, they gave us a tough match, you know, but ultimately they lost. But Jesus won by losing. He triumphed by submitting to the cross. You are worthy because you were slain. And of course, through that shed blood, people were purchased. You were bought with the precious blood of Christ. That's a line in a well-known hymn, In Christ Alone. But it also comes really uh, directly from the New Testament. In the book of Acts, in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. So how precious we are from every tribe and language and people and nation. That's an often repeated idea in the book of Revelation. Seven times you get this kind of fourfold repetition, slightly different each time, different words, but always this idea of every tribe, every tongue, every people, every nation, every language, every kingdom. The church of God is beautiful because it is diverse, because it draws in people from all backgrounds, 
from every race, from male and female, from young and old, from every continent, from rich and poor, from disabled and not, from just every possible kind of diversity. And we're drawn to Christ. And that's the beauty of the church. And one of the wonderful things I'm sure about the worship of God in heaven is going to be how all of those amazing different people kind of blend together. Uh, we occasionally enjoy listening to a little kind of African song. On Sunday morning we did. We listened to um, Let the Spirit of the Lord Come Down. Beautiful African chorus. And how wonderful it would be to hear all the different forms of music in heaven. Jesus has made us kings and priests through his sacrifice. And then it's not only the elders that are worshipping, because John looks again and he says, I heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne of the living creatures and the elders. And in a loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise. So again, the lamb who was slain, again, that focus, but also he is what he's worthy for, to receive praise, to receive glory, to receive honour, and to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength. Now, how can he receive those things? Well, I think it's that they will be acknowledged. Um, in heaven, it's not that we can make Jesus wiser or stronger than he already is, but those things will be acknowledged. The, the glory of them will be added to, be increased as, um, uh, as all the creatures in heaven worship him. And you might be troubled by he's going to receive power and wealth. Um, because, of course, in human hands, power and wealth and strength are dangerous things. And many as a one has been led astray by accumulating wealth or by capturing power. But when you are perfect, as the Lord Jesus Christ is, then to have ultimate power is a blessing to those over whom you rule. Because you rule in love and justice. And the idea of wealth here is probably that Old Testament idea of offerings being brought to the temple. The Israelites brought their offerings to the Lord in Jerusalem for the service of the temple. And the prophets often looked forward to a time when the nations beyond Israel would bring their wealth, their offerings to God in Jerusalem. And it uh, isn't something that particularly happened literally in history. There were times when Israel was a, quite a strong nation and other uh, peoples came and brought tribute, but not very often and never for long. But it will be fulfilled in heaven. The wealth of the nations will stream to him. The elders, 24 elders, are praising. The angels, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of them, are praising. And then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honour and glory and power forever and ever. So it goes outwards in these expanding circles, doesn't it? The elders, the angels, every creature. One day every knee shall bow. One day every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And 
all creatures will will join in this praise. So it's this wonderful picture of this new creation and of um, everything being healed and put right and all the glory going to our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And do you notice here that remarkable thing? To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise, honour, glory, power forever and ever. So the Lord Jesus Christ is put absolutely on a level with God who sits on the throne. We have here such a high view of Jesus. Sometimes we look at the the Gospels and we see Jesus um, pointing towards him being the Son of God and alluding to him uh, having divine power and, and being God and it, it's um, sometimes it's, it's really clear and sometimes it's uh, more kind of hinting and, and so on and then as the New Testament goes on we find more and more and here towards the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation surely this is one of the clearest indications that Jesus Christ is fully God because They are worshipping him alongside the Father seated on his throne. The two are distinct and yet they're of equal Godhead, equally divine. The praise goes to both. What's the application or the kind of life lesson or whatever from all of that. Well, it is the wonderful value and blessing of praise. To sing a new song to the Lord, to offer our worship to him, to give thanks to him when we come before him in prayer. I wonder if we need to recalibrate the time that we spend, each of us, when we're in our private prayer and devotion, the amount of time that we spend on praise and adoration versus how quickly we rush to asking for things. Now, it's good to ask for things. So please don't hear me as if I'm saying you shouldn't be asking God for stuff. You should just be praising him. It's not that at all. He's commanded us to bring our needs to him. He he specifically says to bring your prayers, cast your burdens before the Lord, make your requests known to him. Jesus said that we should ask God for our daily bread and our forgiveness and leading and guiding and all these other things. So it's absolutely right to spend time in requesting things from God. He's told us to do that. That's not, we shouldn't be thinking, oh, that's somehow selfish or oh, I'm kind of annoying God with my requests. No, he loves to hear that. He wants you to bring those things. But also, let's praise him. And that includes thanking him for the things that he has done, for the prayers that he's answered, for the good things that have happened for the blessings that he has granted. And it also goes beyond thanks into praise, that is acknowledging who he is and what he has done. The elders and angels and creatures all around the throne worship God and praise Jesus for who he is and what he's done. Most especially that he died for us on the cross. And we can never ever praise him too much for that. So if there's one kind of bit of advice or kind of practical thing for you to do, it is praise Jesus for the cross and do it regularly and often. I mean, maybe uh, to have a physical cross is a helpful reminder to you maybe that doesn't help you maybe having a verse that you have pinned up somewhere that christ died for our sins uh, or um that the the the, uh, he was 
He was pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, you know, from Isaiah 53 or, or, or something else where that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners from 1 Timothy, whatever it is. Um, have ways of reminding yourself to praise the Lord Jesus Christ and to worship him. And if you're ever tempted to think, oh, God would be fed up listening to me, no, he wants to hear from you. Or if you're tempted to think, well, what kind of a person is it that always wants me to be praising them? I mean, we do like to thank other human beings, but it's out of balance if we're praising them all the time. But of course, that's because we're creatures and we're imperfect and we're not worthy of all praise. But it is right and fitting to praise God because of his perfection. And it's good for us to do so. It's good to speak the truth. It's good to live in the truth and not live by lies and falsehood. And when we are praising God, we're speaking the truth and we're living in the truth. When we worship him, we are bringing ourselves into line with the reality that he is great and that he is good. So praising God is not only fitting and right and warms his heart and he's grateful for it, but it also does us good. And um, countless uh, surveys have shown that people who cultivate thankfulness are happier and healthier. So even if you only want to do it for your own health benefit, which is a great reason, then praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honour and glory and power forever and ever. Amen. We offer you, Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and God, the Holy Spirit, we offer you our worship. How weak and unworthy are our words. How pathetic is our praise. And yet, Lord, you delight to hear it. And you do good to those who are thankful and grateful and have a heart of praise towards our God and Father. No, oh, we praise you, Heavenly Father. We it is beyond words. Your goodness and your grace, your sending of your Son. Lord Jesus, we praise you that you went through that suffering of the cross and that humiliation of the cross and that rejection of the cross for us to purchase us from every tribe and language and people and nation and to make us kings and priests to serve you. Dear Father, we offer you our thanks and our praise. And we ask, Lord, that you would remind us tonight, tomorrow, this week, always. Lord, sweep us up into that vision of the heavenly throne room in Revelation chapter 5 and grant that we would be filled with praise, that it may be on earth as it is in heaven, that your name would be hallowed and honoured among us. In Jesus' name, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and and fill us and refresh us here now in this place and at this moment. Lord, bring to us all that we need. Lord, you are perfectly able to do more than we ask or imagine. And so we pray and bring before you the weakness in our own lives, the weakness in your church, the sinfulness that blights us, the fears that alarm us the distress that is all around us. 
and the difficult decisions that we are not able to take. And Lord, we bring all of that to you and we lay it before you. And in worship we say, Lord, your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Heavenly Father, pray for this online congregation here tonight, virtually present. Pray that each and every one may, with meek hearts and with due reverence, worship and praise you. Pray that each and every one of us would be equipped and empowered to live for you in the hours ahead. Pray for refreshment and comfort and your leading. In Jesus' name, Amen. Let's use the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Coming towards the end, I think I might just might just sneak in one one more song. To God be the glory. great things he has done so loved he the world that he gave us his son who yielded his life an atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Great oh, things he has taught us, great things he has done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our rapture, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son.
I said just one more, didn't I? Hmm, but there we are. Well, feel free to go if you need to, and um, stick around for another minute if you have time. And I am going to finish with this one. If I can even get the music to stand up here in front of me. All my days. Sing this song of gladness, give my praise to the fountain of delight, for in my helplessness you heard my cry, and waves of mercy pour down on my life. of my Redeemer, I will sing of the blood that never fails, of sins forgiven, of conscience cleansed, of death defeated and life without end. Beautiful sin. in majesty, Lord of history, you're the way, the truth, the life, star of the morning, glorious in holiness, you're the risen one, heaven's champion, and you reign, you reign over all. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve and praise and worship the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>